Hey, what's going on, guys? Ryan Topic here, bringing us a brand new video. So this is gonna be the best settings, best overall settings for OBS in 2018. We're gonna be trying aiming for 1080p, 60 frames per second. I did go ahead and record this video, which kind of sucks. It didn't really turn out that well, but I had all the settings just default, and now they went ahead, and I already have all of it entered. But it doesn't really matter; it's not that big of a deal. Uh, just let you guys know, I don't want to go in detail because a lot of people that record these videos like to go in detail on every single little tiny detail. I'm not really one of those people. I like to get straight to the point, tell you guys just basically what has to be changed to go ahead and give you guys the overall like best settings and best performance. If you guys want to kind of stick an actual like super, super in-depth detail on like a 50-minute video on every single setting, there's videos for that. Um, but I don't want people sitting through like a 20-minute video. I just want to get straight to the point, tell you guys what has to be changed, go ahead and get your stream started right away and give you guys the best settings really, really quick. So let's go ahead and hop into this. Bottom right, click on settings. We're going to go to the general tab. Only two things that need to be changed in here for the most common person is going to be the language and the theme. The theme, you can pick whatever you want. Personal preference, this is just like more of like a futuristic, like I would say make, maybe like a Linux theme. I like the dark. I don't really like the Linux theme that much. Uh, language, whatever language you speak, obviously. Uh, apply. We're going to go to stream. We're going to very click on the service. Click on whatever service you're going to be streaming, whatever platform you're on. If you do not see your platform, click show all services. Pick whatever service is there. If it's still not there, well, then you're screwed. So we're going to uncheck that because I really don't need it checked. Next, we're going to click the server. Pick the closest server to you. Now, I could go for the Quebec one or the Toronto one. This is where a lot of people don't know what they're talking about. I see some people talking about this sometimes and say, oh, sometimes pick the U.S. West one. That is so far away from me. You can go ahead and test all of these sometimes. Like I would, the ones I would test is the Toronto Canada one or the Quebec Canada. There could be a lot of lag on the Toronto one, even though it's close to you. So you, sometimes you could go ahead and pick the second closest one to you. But the Toronto Canada one is the closest one to me. It's working perfectly fine. If you do notice some lag with this with one of the servers, just pick the second closest one to you, and then so on and so on. If, you see, if the second one has a lot of lag, pick the third one, then pick the fourth, and so on. But just pick the closest one to you. Then if you notice lag, pick the next one. But I'm going to be picking the closest one to me. Then click apply. Oh yeah, your stream key. Make sure you guys go on the Twitch or whatever platform you're on. Grab your stream key, just paste it in here, and then go ahead and click apply. Never give anyone your stream key either. Next, we're going to go to output. It's going to be default. It's going to be simple. We're going to click on output mode. Click on advanced. Um, I used to go into the recording and all the audio stuff like that. I'm not going to bother with that because uh, this is going to be the best settings for streaming with OBS. What we're going to go ahead and do is go to the encoder. Now, I said in my last video a year ago that I like the NVEC more and that it is better for performance and yada yada. I don't like it anymore and the reason being is because when I was inside buildings and I messed around with OBS for so long for some reason with the NVEC whenever I streamed and recorded with the OBS the colors would be so dark when I'm inside like it would look a lot darker than it is and people would complain I would end up putting a filter on and try to pop the colors up and bring the brightness up and it just looked so distorted this is personal preference a lot of people say to use the NVEC but it's up to you there's not much of a performance difference at all you're not going to notice the difference except for the actual colors and basically the motion in game I would go ahead and what I would do is click on the very first one if you do have a G4 series graphics card I would click on the encoder for the NVEC I would click apply click OK start a recording just kind of do a little bit of a test run around if you're playing on a game just kind of record something then stop recording then I'd go back Go back to the output. I would then change it to the X264, apply, OK, do the exact same thing and do a test, and then watch them. Watch them and see which one you like more. For me, I would stick with the X264. It's not a built in encoder like NVEC, but it's still perfectly fine. I like the X264 because just the colors are just basically whatever I'm seeing actually on my monitor. They're not that dark. Rescale output, put 1920 by 1080 if you want 1080p. If you want 720p, do 1280 by 720. I'm gonna be. I want to go ahead and do a 1080p 60fps stream. So I want 1920 by 1080. Now this is gonna be a little bit confusing for you guys. I don't know the total ins and outs of it. So for the uh, the rate control, you want a constant bit rate. A constant bit rate means it's always gonna try and do the highest bit rate possible. So if you set your stream to a 9,000 bit rate, 9,000 kilobits per second, it's gonna try and get 9,000 kilobits per second all the time. If you are a Twitch affiliate, this is going to be for Twitch only. Disclaimer, Twitch only. I don't know about any other services. For Twitch, if you are a Twitch affiliate, the highest bit rate you can have is a 6,500 kilobit per second. If you're a Twitch partner, I know you can go over that because I was just watching a streamer and he put his like 9,000, then he put it up to 12,000 and he kept switching it. 
he wasn't able to switch his bitrate anymore because it was like messing with the Twitch servers. So I don't know what you could set your bitrate to, like what the cap is if you're a Twitch partner. But I know for a Twitch affiliate, the highest you can go is 6,500. But the thing is, is if you were also a local recording with OBS while you were streaming, I would go ahead and try and put your bitrate to the highest you can. If you don't know what your upload is, go to speedtest.net. Do a speed test. It'll tell you what your upload speed is. If you have a 5.0 megabit per second upload speed, then I would set your bitrate to about 4,000 or 4,500. If it says it's a 10 megabyte per second upload speed, okay? 10,000 kilobits per second. I would set your bitrate to 1,000 or 500 lower. So if it's 10,000, if it says it's 10, I would go ahead and set it to 9,000 or 9,500. You don't want to put it exactly what the number is because that's just using up all the bandwidth and you might get run into some trouble and might go ahead and get some lag sometimes. So whatever your speed test says for your upload speed, put it to 500 to 1,000 lower. If the upload speed says 10, that means that's 10,000. So put it to 9,000 or 9,500. But the thing is here is that, yet again, like I said earlier, Twitch affiliate, it caps at 6,500. So if I put it to 9,000, it's going to cap at 6,500. But if you're doing a local recording with OBS, if, it, if you click start streaming and start recording, when you go ahead and watch your clip back that is now saved into your directory, it's going to be higher quality than what you stream because your bit rate was higher. So if you're going to be doing like high rate reels and like uh, like little like montage and doing like little like snippets and taking gameplay or uploading like raw gameplay, the quality is going to be better because you set your bit rate higher. So when you're doing the local recording, the bit rate is going to be at 9,000. It's not going to be at whatever Twitch cuts it off at. Just let you guys know that. Hopefully you guys understand that. If you don't, just let me know down in the comments and I'll give you guys like a perfect write-out of it. Next, we're going to go ahead and do the CPU usage. The lower you put this, the better it is, but the more impact on your performance you're going to have. So if you set this to ultra fast, your stream quality is going to be like garbage, but it's going to be like barely any performance hit at all. I would suggest if you have a pretty decent computer, I would suggest doing slow to fast. I would do these three. It's up to you though. If you notice you usually get about 120 frames per second in a game and you go ahead and put this on slow, you're only getting like 40. I would go ahead and try medium. Then maybe you're getting like 60. Maybe you don't want 60. Maybe you want 80. I would do 80. Then maybe you're like, okay, 80 is perfectly fine. I can go ahead and play with 80 frames per second. And then I'll go ahead and stay on 80. This is up to you. But just let you guys know, the ones I would suggest is low to faster if you have a good high-end PC. If you have like a separate computer for streaming, I would go ahead and do placebo. I know last year there was a meme about it because I said it wrong. I said pl placebo or placebo or something like that. Yeah, I said placebo. But for placebo, uh, placebo, I would go ahead and do this if you had like an actual streaming PC that was just meant for streaming. I'd do placebo. So, yet again, slow to fast is what I would recommend if you have a good PC. If you don't, I would do maybe faster to super fast. i pick these ones. I would never do ultra fast because that's just, like, the quality of that is just garbage. But, the just again, lower you put it, the better it is, but more performance it. The higher you put it, the worse the quality is, but the less performance that you have. So, it's up to you what you want to do. If you want to play the game on a crappier quality and a crappier performance, but you want the stream to be a better quality, then that's what you should do. I'm going to go ahead and do medium. Next for the profile, you just go ahead and do high. You always want to go ahead and pick high. You always want the profile to be high. Uh, for the tune, this is up to you. The tune is going to basically change the quality. Um, I would not go ahead and do anything at all, but if you want, the ones that I recommend is animation. You guys can go ahead, like I said earlier, with the bit rate, or which one was it? Oh yeah, what I said with the with the encoder. Yet again, this is another encoder issue. Just go ahead and pick whatever you want. Kind of do like the pick one, test it, pick one, test it. So that's up to you. Personally, me, I would click none. X2, X264 options, don't touch that. You don't need to go ahead and put anything in here. Actually, in the older days, you would go ahead and put a line of code in here, but now you don't need to. For audio, 48 kilohertz, because that's the highest quality. Then you want to go ahead and pick desktop audio. Just pick whatever the default is, or you just go ahead and click default. Same thing for the mic. Pick whatever your mic is. Or just go ahead and do default if you don't know. Because sometimes you have like a whole bunch of like ones like this and maybe you don't know which one's yours. I'll just do the default. Also, so mic audio device 2. I think I'm going to make this into a separate video because this is quite in detail. Like you can do like separate audio tracks. So, like when you're recording, you do like separate tracks. So if like you bring it into like an editing, uh, like in Sony Vegas, you're going to have like your gameplay audio in one. And then you can go ahead and have like your mic on um, a different uh, different track as well. So maybe like mute the gameplay for a second and then just have your voice or mute your voice. Just have the gameplay. I'll make that into a separate video. And once that video is done, I will link it down in the description and have an annotation on screen. 
Now, that's it for uh, the audio. You don't need to go ahead and do anything else. For the video, this is basically a lot of stuff as well. It's really important. So if you want 1080p, put both of these on 1080. If you want to stream in 1080p, 60 frames per second, put both of these settings here on 1080. If you want to be streaming in 720p, then do 1280 by 720 for both of them. And then your downscale filter is going to be the lowest one. Yet again, the higher it is, the lower the quality. The uh, lower it is, the higher the quality. So we're going to pick the 32 samples. So also again, I want 1080p. So I want both of these on 1920 by 1080. For the frames, you can stream in 1080p, 30 FPS. It's still going to be great. I've noticed when I was streaming a game called Miscreated, when I streamed at 30 FPS, I don't know why, but for some reason, my computer would lag. And uh, people can go ahead and give me a whole bunch of suggestions it was this and that. Trust me, I have messed around with OBS for a long time. And I don't know why, but for some reason, whenever I streamed this certain game, whenever I did 60 FPS, the game for some reason would lag. Like, I wouldn't actually lag in game, but it was actually the stream. The stream for some reason would stutter, and the gameplay would just stutter whenever someone was watching. I don't know why. But if you want a 1080p stream, like 60 FPS, go ahead and click on obviously you're going to do 60. But I would just test it just to make sure it's okay. But 30 FPS, 720p is perfectly fine as well. It's perfectly fine. It's going to be less of a performance hit if you do 720p, 30 FPS as well. And it still looks perfectly fine. But some people like to see like this great, great quality. But if you don't have a high-end PC, if you don't have a high-end PC, I would recommend doing either 1280 by 720 30 fps or i would recommend doing 1080p with 30 fps or you can go ahead and do 720p of 60 fps it's up to you just kind of mess around with those but if you want like the best quality of a really good pc just do the exact same settings i have here hot keys i'll give you guys a quick rundown on how hot keys work and how you can set a macro for it so if you want to start your stream let's say you just go ahead and open up obs you go ahead Open up OBS, and you can instantly click Control and Shift, and then your then your stream would just start right away. You want to stop your stream? You can set a macro for it to be Control Tab, and then it'll go ahead and do Control Tab, and it'll stop your stream. You don't have to go ahead and keep opening up OBS and go ahead and click on it manually. You just go ahead and click the two keys on the keyboard, and then it go ahead and does it yourself. What you can also do with that as well is go into your keyboard software. You go ahead and set a macro on G1, set it to Control Tab. And then you can set that to G1, and then there you go. You automatically have, you just click G1 right off the bat, and then you go ahead and have your stream, uh, stop your stream. And what I do as well is I actually have a notepad, because I literally set nine keys. I didn't really remember what did what, so I made a notepad. I put it over top of my monitor on the wall. I just looked up, okay, uh, G2 key, okay, that starts my stream. Then I would click G2. Okay, I want to do maybe my mic. I want to push it to mute, so I could do Control Z. So I look up, I would go, okay, so control Z is the G9 key. So I click G9 and then mute my mic. Maybe someone has to come into the room right away or you have to take a phone call. It's going to be a lot easier just to press one key than going into your actual OBS software, like maybe tap out of the game, then go ahead and mute mic. It's going to take an extra couple seconds. So I would recommend setting like a mute key. Uh, sorry, it's actually going to be this one as well. I was doing the desktop audio. But yeah, like the mute key, maybe like control Z or something. Just go ahead and mess around with those. Then go ahead into your keyboard software go ahead and set a whole bunch of macros if you guys don't understand how to set macros in your keyboard software i can go ahead and make a separate video on that as well just let me know down in the comments but there's like the basic basic um thing on how to do it just the basic so next we're going to go into the advanced this is a very important tab the most important tabs are the output or sorry yeah the output the video and the advanced so the advanced one for the process priority we want to have high what this means is uh, if you have like Photoshop running, you have the game running, you have like Google Chrome for like your Twitch uh, chat, and you have a whole bunch of tabs open, and all these processes running. If you have this on the highest one, it means that your computer is going to automatically go and say, guys, we have to get OBS to be the highest priority. So it's going to give it more performance, and overall on your stream is going to be a little bit of a higher performance because you're saying you're telling your computer, guys, please make OBS the highest priority. Put like the, as like most memory, most. Uh, like everything into go put into OBS to go ahead and get the best quality. So I would set this on the highest. If you notice a little bit of lag, I would maybe move this down to about a normal or above. But yet again, this is just one of those things where you need to go ahead and test it out yourself because everyone's computer is different. You're not going to have the same specs as me. So I would go ahead and do a little bit of a test. Open up your game or open up whatever you usually stream with and go ahead and do some tests. Yet again, what you got to do is click maybe normal. Or actually, sorry, I would start from the highest one because maybe the highest one just works right off the bat. Start with high. Click apply. Start. 
kind of do a little bit of test. Go ahead and watch it. Come back. If it looks perfectly fine, there you go. Bada bing, bada boom. You have high. It works perfectly fine. If it doesn't, you get a little bit of a lag. It doesn't really work that well for you. Do the above. Do the exact same thing. Kind of test it out and see what works for you. But for me, if you want the best quality of a good computer, I would just go ahead and click high. Everything else in here, I would not touch except for the uh, color format. Now, the color format, I did try messing around with this once before. When I told you guys earlier, I was playing Miscreated. Um, I was playing a couple of games. When I was ever inside a building, it'd be really, really dark. That was with the X264 and the NVEC. You can go ahead and mess around with these as well. This will change the color formats. Maybe you want a little bit of a different color on your stream. You want to be a little bit different. You can go ahead and mess around with these as well. You'd have to go ahead and do a test. Click one, apply, start recording. So that's up to you. The default is, though, it's NV12. Everything else in here, I would not touch. Oh, yes, you can also do the YUV color range. That's up to you as well. That's basically something like you have to do the test as well. It's up to you, but I'll just leave it on partial. We're totally done there. Next is the stream delay. So if you want a lot of interaction on your stream, you want to be talking to your viewers, like like just snap a finger. You want to do it like you want to be like hey, someone says, hey, you want to apply right away and get the interaction. I would uncheck this. But if you're worried about getting stream sniping, you're like on a high intense game, you're playing a tournament of some kind, or you're playing a battle royale game, I would kind of put a little bit of a delay on. I would do about a minute. Because if you do about 20 seconds, people can kind of see the general area you're running in, they kind of know where you are. If you don't want to get stream sniped, and you kind of want to have some interaction, I would put this on about 40 seconds to about 60 seconds. If you don't really care about talking to your viewers, maybe you're a big, huge streamer, then I would go ahead and maybe put this on like two minutes, and then you basically can never get stream sniped. And that's about it, guys. That's basically going to cover every single little thing. I'll go ahead and just go through everything once more. And you guys can just pause the video wherever you want. Go ahead and get those settings. And if this video did help you guys out, please go ahead and drop a like on the video. We almost hit 100K on the last video, the OBS 2017 settings, the best settings for 2017. I'm really hoping we can hit over 100K. If you guys have any suggestions for videos, maybe like a new... Uh, Streamlabs updated video or uh, Adobe After Effects render settings or Sony Vegas render settings. Just let me guys know. Also, if you guys need any help and you don't quite understand something or if I went too fast for you and need some help, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Tough Tech and then go ahead and direct message me or just go ahead in the comments and go ahead and ask for some help and I'll reply to you guys. I go ahead and reply to all the comments or like 95% of the comments. But that's going to cut it for this video, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy and this helped you out. Please go ahead and drop a like. Remember, go ahead and subscribe to Tough Tech and there'll be a lot more tutorials and a lot more tips and tricks to go ahead and help you guys out to go ahead and grow your career on YouTube or streaming. It's basically help you guys out overall to go ahead and do some things. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.